trace allows us to learn some interesting things about the um, the the properties of commutation uh, among matrices or operators. So let's look at um, just a, a quick exercise here. So this is um, yeah, actually it's not an example; it's an exercise. So this is this is number problem number fifteen from this section. If we have two um, uh, operators and V is finite dimensional um, <clears throat> then the trace of ST is equal to whoops the trace of TS and so there's really nothing to this because we proved it for matrices and we proved that you can go back and forth between operators and matrices. So just to write this down, the trace of ST is um, the trace of the matrix of uh, <coughs> uh, ST, which is the trace of the matrix of S times the matrix of t um, and so I guess let me see so for that first one there I used uh, 1016 and then for this second one I used oh something from uh, chapter 3 that I forget Let's call it uh, 343. And then um, once we've got these in terms of matrices, we know that we can switch them around. That's one of the things that we proved. And that was, uh, I think, 1014. And then you can uh, put it back together in the reverse, using the reverse steps of what we just did. So we get trace TS. OK. So uh, that was pretty simple and, and, and straightforward, right? So then let's see. So then we will have um, the commutator. So the commutator, oh, I sort of hosed that up there. Um, let me see, commutator of two operators is it's sort of a, a measurement of how far they are from being a commutative operator. So it's written with these square brackets. And so this is the, the commutator bracket, sometimes it's called. And it's a new operator in LV. And um, it's defined by, so the commutator of S and T is ST minus TS. And so uh, you can see that um, the commutator is zero um, if and only if S and T commute. And so this is used a lot in operator theory. Um, so then we have corollary uh, 10.19, which is the curious fact that um, there is no ST in LV for which the commutator is the identity. Um, <clears throat> and this is actually an interesting and surprisingly deep uh, sort of thing. And the proof for it um, looks straightforward, but then when you realize how much went into it in the way of working the tools together. It, it turns out there's actually, it's, it's a little bit hairy. Um, it remains true in infinite dimensions as long as you uh, are very careful. Um, but, um, but like I said, yes, you need to be careful. So let's see, so there are, is no S and T that has commutator equal to the identity. Let's go ahead and prove that. There's actually current research being done, by the way, about commutators being near the identity and, and getting bounds and what it means if you can get commutators that are 
close or not close to the identity. So, um, in fact, uh, Terry Tao, who's one of the uh, great mathematical minds of, of the generation, um, of the past few generations, really, uh, has actually done some work on commutators near the identity. So, <clears throat> math is alive. Anyways, trace of st minus ts. Okay, so this is the trace of st minus the trace of ts. Uh, as we've seen, trace is additive, right? So that was 1018. And then um, uh, we know that uh, from the correlate, from the, the exercise that I just worked out, trace of st is equal to trace of ts. Um, and so then the simple observation is that uh, since the trace of the identity is not zero, um, well, then there's no way that these things can, can be the same operator. So two operators with different traces cannot be the same. Two operators with the same traces may or may not be the same, but if they have different traces, they can't be the same. The end. So that was it. Pretty simple, right? Okay. So um, now, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to mess with your head. So let's look at this example. We'll take uh, v to be the smooth functions on uh, the unit interval. So smooth functions just means that you can take as many derivatives as you like, uh, and you still have a continuous function. So for instance, this includes all polynomials, exponential functions, sine and cosine, um, other nice things defined in terms of power series, whatever. So the vector space of smooth functions uh, on the interval 0, 1. OK, and let's define a couple of operators. So um, we'll define. Uh, D and X operators on this space. And D is going to be the derivative. So DU at X is just going to be given by U prime of X. And X is going to be a multiplication by the identity function. So XU at a point X is just going to be independent variable X times UX. Okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, I want you to do the following. First, work out the commutator of, of D and X. Okay, um, then based on that, you should be able to uh, determine what hypothesis uh, is missing in corollary 1019. And then um, just as a random side note, uh, turns out, so I'll leave those for you to do as, as, an, as an exercise. It's kind of cute. Uh, this, this property So the fact that this is true, this property or the existence of this phenomenon um, actually implies the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And if you don't know what that is, I'll, I'll let you uh, look it up on Wikipedia. Um, it's a strange phenomenon related to the Fourier transform that has deep implications for physics. But uh, anyway, thought you might like that.